I am a note taker. All of my life I have been a note taker. I take notes in class, I take notes at conferences, I take notes in meetings, I take notes in Zoom calls, I take notes in books. Boy, do I mark up my books. <laughs> I would take notes while watching television if Kim would let me. Once, and this is a true story, once I got myself and some of my friends kicked out of a preview screening of the movie Master and Commander because I was taking notes during the movie. The studio, is that, the studio executive who was uh, there observing everything didn't like the fact that I was taking notes and he booted us. Now, based on all of this, you might think that I have some super scientific method of taking notes, some system that helps me organize them and take uh, full advantage of them, but it's not true. I don't. In fact, my notes are a chaotic mess. Now, each individual note is fine. I take great individual notes, but the notes as a whole, as a body of work, they are complete chaos. And therein lies the problem. What good are all of these notes if I can't make use of them? If they are scattered across dozens of paper notebooks, uh, hundreds of books, and thousands of computer files? What good are all of these notes if I don't have some sort of system that allows me to put them to use when I need the information? They're no good at all. Enter Zettelkasten. Now, what's Zettelkasten? It's kind of a strange word. Well, it's a German word. Zettel means note, and Kasten means box. So Zettelkasten means note box or slip box. And the Zettelkasten method is a method of taking notes that allows you to use your notes in a way that helps you do research and helps you write more effectively. This Zettelkasten system of taking notes has a history going back hundreds of years but it's become prominent recently thanks to the popularity of a researcher, a German researcher named Niklas Luhmann, uh, who used this method to compile over 90,000 individual notes that he used to be a very prolific researcher and writer. Here is how the Zettelkasten system works. First, you carry pen and paper with you at all times so that you're always ready to make notes, to capture ideas. Okay, so far so good. I do this already and I've done it for many, many years. Second, you make notes about anything you want to remember, whether it's an idea or a concept or a fact. When you're in a conversation and something cool comes up, you take the time to write it down. When you're reading a book and you find an interesting concept, you write it down immediately. Again, not a big deal. I've been doing this for years. Third, at the end of the day or the next time that you're able to, you convert all of your daily notes, your fleeting notes, you convert them into permanent notes. And this is very important. And it's where my past system, not really a system, where my past system uh, veers from Zettelkasten. In Zettelkasten, you convert your uh, daily notes, your fleeting notes, into permanent notes. And these permanent notes will follow a specific format. Uh, each person's format will be slightly different, but they all share some similarities. Each permanent note is going to have a permanent identifier. This is usually uh, some sort of number. Uh, Nicholas Lumen just used arbitrary numbers. His first note was note one, second note was note two, third note was note three. And then if he made a sub note to note one, it would be one B and then one B one and so on. And it gets complicated. Nowadays, a lot of people just use the date. Also, each note, each permanent note contains one and only one idea. And this is the concept of atomicity. I can't even say it, atomicity. Ah, it, it, you want each idea to be an atomic idea. You can't reduce it any further. Next, and, and this is where Zettelkasten gains a lot of its power, you connect each permanent note to other permanent notes in your Zettelkasten system. Uh, let's say that I make note number 17, and note number 17 is about the debt snowball method for paying off your loans. I might, on this new note number 17, then point back to note number 8. And number 8 is just a general note about debt. And then when I make that link back to uh, note number eight, 
On note number eight, I link it to forward to note number 17 about the debt snowball method. And as you do this, as you build this up over hundreds and thousands of different notes, you have this vast internet interconnected web of notes that gains, I don't know, it's like a network uh, of knowledge. Finally, each permanent note should have information about the source. So if you got the idea from a book, you note the book. If you got it from a web page, you note the web page. If you got it from a conversation with a friend, you note who that friend is. And the final piece of the Zellokasten method is patience. You need to take time to build a body of work, a body of notes. As you build a collection of hundreds of notes and then thousands of notes, or 90,000 notes in the case of Nicholas Lumen, the links between your notes, like I said, become an interconnected web. And in time, patterns will emerge. And this is important. This is the power of the Settelkasten method. You don't want to impose any kind of external structure. You don't want to use categories. You don't want to use your own mind and arbitrarily decide the structure for your notes. You want the, the patterns to emerge organically and they will with time without you even needing to do anything. Because you're creating all these links and connections, patterns will emerge between these disparate branches and you'll discover surprising things in your notes that you might not otherwise have noticed. The whole point is to allow unexpected connections to emerge and reveal themselves. So that's it. That is how the Zettelkasten method works. That's what I have been obsessed with for the past few days now. Folks who use the Settelkasten method swear by it. They say that it gives them a second brain, that it gives them all sorts of unexpected insights due to this vast interconnected web of ideas. And Nicholas Luhmann used it to be a very prolific writer. I want to be a prolific writer, and I truly think this method could help me do that. I'm already taking the notes, right? But I have no system for using the notes, and I think this might work. I'm going to try it, but I have a couple of concerns. First, I'm 51, and I know that it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I'm an old dog, and I have been doing what I'm doing for a long time now. I realize it's not super effective, but it's habit. It's how I do things. I'm not sure I'll be able to impose this new idea, creating these permanent notes uh, and then imposing this system on them, I don't know if I can make that part of my routine, but I want to try. Second, and this is the biggest problem, I don't want to create a lot more work for myself. And in my eight hours of research, yes, really, I've spent eight hours researching Settelkasten. In my eight hours of research, I've come to realize that a lot of people make this into a lot of work. They spend so much time deciding what software to use, deciding what structure to use for their permanent notes, and so on. And it's, to me, I wonder how it's even worth it if there's so much falderall just getting to where you have the notes in your settle custom system. I don't know, I'm a little nervous about it. The thing is, I just want to take good notes and then to be able to find them again and see the connections, which is what the Zettelkasten system promises. I don't want to mess with the software. I don't want to mess with trying to figure out uh, all these different little fiddly bits. I don't care. Where does that leave me? I think what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try this system, but I'm going to do it the old fashioned analog way. I'm going to use note cards. In fact, I've already made my first four notes using the Zettelkasten method. I have tons of index cards on hand. I know how to use them. I like using them. They're simple and there are no barriers. And that's a good thing. If I like how this system works, then I will probably move to a digital system using software. I've got to let the dog in, she's whining. Come on. Kim worries that I'm just making more work for myself by starting with the index cards and then potentially moving to the digital system. She says that I should start with the digital system, start with the software first. And she might be right, there's no question. But from my experience, 
The technology is too often a barrier to getting started. Uh, use these videos as an example. I had been talking about doing video for years and I never did it. It was only once I accepted the fact that I was going to use the bare minimum technology, my iPhone and, and the webcam, and I wasn't going to worry about the quality that I actually started these things. Now, after two months, this is my 44th video. I've done 44 videos in two months because I intentionally removed the barriers and went as basic as possible. And I realized that these are low quality compared to a lot of YouTube videos. I don't care. They're done. In two months, I've finished 44 videos. If I had waited to try to find the perfect technology, I still wouldn't have made a single one. As an aside, a lot of my reading has been in this book called How to Take Smart Notes by Sonke Arendt. And this is a great book. It touches on the Settelkasten system and uh, Arendt's uh, particular method of using it, but it goes into so much more. It, it's just a really interesting book about how to take smart notes and then how to use those notes in writing and research. So there you have it. I am going to try Settelkasten, but I'm going to try the low tech index card method and I'm curious to see where it goes. What would you do?